Welcome everyone uh, for our final town hall meeting of the year. And uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, I'm looking forward to having a great discussion on some of the topics of today. And uh, I'm willing to take on the tough questions, ask me anything. This is your opportunity to be candid, to be brutally frank with me about the challenges ahead for Silicon Valley for America. And I'll do my best to respond to your questions, your queries, to see how we can collaborate and make things better. My name is uh, Rishi Kumar, and uh, I just a quick introduction of myself. Uh, if this is the first time that you're joining our meeting, uh, I currently work in high tech. I work in the big data analytics AI ML space. And what I've done is I've applied the, the tech framework of finding solutions in government. And as an immigrant, as a mechanical engineer who came into this country to study uh, mechanical engineering graduate school, I, I discovered that, uh, you know, I had a zeal to solve problems around the community when I was working for IBM. And uh, I decided to apply some of the, the innovative approach that we, uh, that, we, uh, that we are quite successful in the world of tech. And uh, I really enjoyed that because uh, we were able to impact, uh, we took on some big challenges. We were able to impact them. And ultimately that led to, led to a run to city council in the city of Saratoga. The very first time I ran, we barely made it with uh, 71 votes, just barely. But four years later, we won with the greatest number of votes in city history because we took on the big challenges and we, we highlighted uh, to the community that we could actually fix them. It wasn't about, uh, about political rhetoric or platitudes. It was about rolling up our sleeves and working in the trenches. And if you go to my website, rishikumar.com slash about rishi slash about rishi, you will find uh, some of the examples of what we have done in the city of Saratoga. And uh, for example, with, uh, as a water activist, we took on the challenge uh, of San Jose Water Company that had been uh, gouging us that had been raising their water rates in a drought, their profits had gone from $22 million to $52 million. And uh, we took on that challenge. And so far we have rejected nine of their proposals that have benefited a million people of Silicon Valley. So the thing is, uh, if you look at myself as a, as a tech executive, I'm not a career politician. And uh, that's the reason why I have a willingness to take on the the kitchen sink thrown at me. And uh, so that's the story playing out. And that's the reason why we're running for Congress because Silicon Valley has never had a tech savvy leader ever in a million years of Silicon Valley. And every time I see the congressional tech hearings, I sit down and do the bench cringe. I sit down with the popcorn, have a good laugh. And our congressional leaders are totally inept when it comes to tech, but also with respect to some of the challenges that are brewing ahead. And uh, California fires is a big one. We need to find some real solutions. We also have challenges with uh, the water infrastructure. You know, we need a plan now. We are pushing for high density housing, but there is no plan for water, schools, sewers. And uh, I call it a managed growth plan. You know, prudent policies, prudent politics is what we need. We don't need the follow the herd mentality. And some of the other challenges are we have a challenge with housing traffic, homelessness, and quality of life issues. They are, they are breaking into cars, stealing catalytic converter thefts are happening around us. And burglaries are happening. I just heard two of our friends who had, who had gone on a vacation and they came back and their home had been burglarized. Now we moved from Michigan in 2000 uh, and we ended up here. In the last two decades, I think uh, things have gotten a lot worse. And every neighborhood, every street I walk into, I find that people are leaving. I've, I've met with neighbors with their boxes all packed, ready to go. And some of them said, uh, they asked me, Rishi, when is the election? When I tell them it's June of next year, they tell me, Rishi, I'll be gone by then because I'm sick and tired. Super high taxes and there are burglaries happening around us. People are just a little unhappy and we need some able-bodied leaders. Uh, someone called it uh, fresh blood uh, to take on these challenges. And that's the reason why we believe that we can advance some of these problems, fix them and, uh, and work in the interest of the people. As the council member of Saratoga, I would consistently reject the real estate money, the land development uh, developers would show up with uh, $5,000, $10,000 check and uh, not interested in, uh, in being part of their game 
but mainly interested in being, being part of uh, addressing the challenges of the people. So that's a quick introduction of myself. And uh, now in the election last year, we ended up with uh, 127,000 votes, uh, better than any challenger in the last 30 years running against Congressman Eshoo. And uh, the gap was 45,000 votes. Uh, if we had gotten 45,000 more votes, we would have won the race. And that's why we believe we have the we have the story to get a good solid win next year. We have met with more neighbors this year compared to any of the previous two years combined. We are running a solid grassroots campaign and we are building uh, for a strong uh, 2020 win, uh, 2022 win. And uh, now, if you look at my success as a city council member, that would reflect upon what we would do in Congress. Essentially, you know, sure, we shared the establishment politics. You know, we stayed stayed with the challenges of the people, and we we they call me sometimes the tank man, the Tiananmen Tiananmen Square tank man of Saratoga, because many uh, many occasions I would stand on one side with the rest of my council members on the other side, because I believe that this was the right thing to do. And many a times we would win these types of uh, issues, these types of projects, because the community was always behind my efforts. And uh, you know, when you look at uh, some of the things that we did was pushing for fiscal moderation. I was against a, a road tax, a road repair tax that was proposed by my council members. All four of them wanted to move ahead with it. I was the dissenting vote. And after moving forward, they decided it was uh, perhaps not the right approach as they started hearing from the community and they started pulling back. Uh, I was pushing for more of budget optimization compared to raising taxes. So anyway, that gives you a glimpse of uh, my political stint, my background, and why we are poised to win this race in 2022. So what we'll do is we'll go through some quick questions and see uh, how we can get them addressed for you. Okay. So uh, let's see, the first question is from Annette. Thank you, Annette. Uh, uh, it's about burglaries. And uh, this is what was contained in my email that I'd sent out. And uh, okay, so what would you as a congressional rep do to address burglaries? Uh, and I, I, see, I see a little hint of uh, that this might not be in the realm of a congressional rep. And uh, Annette, I totally respect your opinion on this. But uh, you know, when there are challenges happening around us, I don't think so any elected leader should be saying that uh, this is not in my domain. It's not in my realm of things to do because every elected leader is there serving the people. And uh, as a congressional rep, we serve 740,000 people. And currently the district spreads across three counties, across uh, I would say largely about 31 cities and designated uh, census cities. And it's a fairly large area, 800 square miles. And if there's a challenge that is uh, burning, then we should step up and do something. And the, the congressional platform is very powerful. You could bring together elected leaders. You could uh, figure out innovative approaches, solutions. You could figure out policies. You know, you could collaborate with the state and local government to create our policies that would help address that. Prop 47 is something that we have talked about as uh, responsible for our votes today. And we have to figure out approaches to that. But I also believe in addressing the income income inequality gap. And uh, we have uh, consistently rolled out STEM programs, Lego Robotics, Entrepreneurship Boot Camps for young students, and especially the most disadvantaged students because they have never had the opportunity to understand the tech, tech economy. And what we try to do is seed. Education is extremely important. And if you look at the the current situation with all these uh, ransacking of malls and things like that, uh, if we can provide the right type of opportunities and bridge the income inequality gap. Now in the last 20 years, the gap has grown significantly higher in every, every county, every region of America. You know, things are shifting and we believe that we have to address that. Go to get to the root cause. As a mechanical engineer, we always, I've always believed in doing a root cause analysis. And as part of that, it's about creating education, creating opportunities, creating jobs, and allowing everybody to, to do well. I mean, we are in the business of uh, creating wealth here in Silicon Valley. We are in the business of innovating, but it's about creating prosperity for the whole world because what we do here very well, when we roll out a startup that turns, turns into a mega enterprise, like a Google or a Facebook, 
you know, we are helping create innovation models all across the globe. And uh, so we should continue doing that. You know, we should create opportunities. So, Annette, I, I respect your opinion, but uh, burglaries is something that is definitely going to be part of my agenda to see how we can reduce. In fact, my, my stint on the city council, we dropped burglaries by 47%, the greatest drop in our city history from year to year. That was 2016 to 2017. And then uh, we also, in uh, the it was the biggest drop compared to any other Silicon Valley city and that record still stands. And uh, it was a series of efforts. Uh, I would invite you to go to my website, rishikumar.com slash safety slash safety and download the top 25 safety tips because this safety tips, it went viral here in Saratoga and uh, downloaded by, by thousands and following a few tips would make your home safer. And uh, it was a, a year and a half long effort what we undertook. Uh, before we got started, we had three neighborhood watch meetings in Saratoga. One of them was mine. One of them was my next neighborhood that I had helped uh, launch. And by the time we ended, we had over 70 neighborhood watch meetings, over 300, over 300 neighborhood leaders that were empowered about crime, about safety, that were collaborating. We provided the, our residents the ability to connect, communicate, and collaborate. And we actually helped raise the happiness index of Saratoga because neighbors that know each other are much happier in that neighborhood. We created uh, cookie cutter approaches of how to create, how to launch block parties, how to put, put out cameras, neighborhood cameras. Working with some of my friends, we rolled out an approach which involved taking the video data, uploading it on the Amazon cloud and providing that failover and high availability systems that are needed to manage uh, complex camera systems in neighborhoods. So we were quite effective in rolling some of these solutions out and uh, we will continue to innovate as your congressional rep, Annette, to see how we can drop burglaries. Now, catalytic converters have also become a problem. You can actually uh, go to a shop and they will, uh, they will protect your catalytic converter through a system that they would recommend. And I don't know much about it, but there is a way to protect your catalytic converters. When these are stolen, they actually make, uh, I was talking to a sheriff, they make a couple hundred dollars from this. But obviously when we go to fix that catalytic converter, we have to spend uh, thousands of dollars to get that fixed. So yes, uh, this is a major issue right now. And uh, we should all be engaged uh, watching out for our neighbors and making sure that these perps are not entering our neighborhood and uh, robbing homes. That's not anybody, that's not what anyone wants to see. Okay, so let's see. Let's, let's go to the next question. And uh, this is from, uh, okay, Rishi, I met you at my door and I said, I would like to, uh, okay. Oh, but that is interesting. So this is from, uh, from Bob uh, and uh, I'm not sure when we met, but apparently we met uh, at Bob's home and he said he would like to see fresh blood in Congress. And, uh, and it was part of my email. And what Bob is saying is I was pleasantly surprised uh, to find that in your email uh, I hope you will never meet Count Dracula. <laughs> this was, uh, we had a one line and I, I thought nobody would ever get to that line. What we had said was, our neighbors are asking for fresh blood and, uh, and uh, I hope I don't encounter Count Dracula when I knock on that door. And it uh, looks like the, just Bob and myself are reading the emails that we are sending out. But uh, Bob says it's not a question as such, but it's more interested in uh, my ideas for Congress, in terms of uh, what would Rishi do? And essentially some of the things that we talk about, now this is a loaded question in terms of, and, and Bob, uh, I'm pretty sure we talked about this at your door, but uh, my approach is, is uh, to be a problem solver. I do not want to be a career politician like we have so many in Congress today. And, uh, uh, you know, one of the things that we have done is we have signed the term limits pledge because we need term limits in every strata of American politics because our politicians are staying there forever. We also need a cultural shift away from the lobbyist and keeping it squarely upon people. And which is what I'm looking to do by rejecting the dark tainted money. We do not take that type of money. And uh, politicians today, including politicians in our congressional district do, 
which is absolutely okay. It was the old school way of doing things. We have always rejected the land developers and keenly interested to fix the challenges. If you look at my stint on the city council, that was uh, why we ended up winning with the greatest number of votes in city history, because we believe in taking on the big challenges. And that's the pledge that we make today and every day that we will always tackle the tough challenges, no matter how difficult they are. Thank you, Bob. Uh, I really appreciate that. Oh, so now here is a question. Uh, please don't mention my name. We are heading out to Hawaii. Any specific safety tips? Okay, great. So let's talk about that. So again, I would like to invite you to download the top 25 safety tips at rishikumar.com slash safety and, uh, and apply some of the safety. These are deterrents because if you protect your home, if you make it difficult for your home to be broken into, then uh, they will actually try someone else's home. And if all of us did that, then it would make the burglaries a lot more difficult. So download the top 25 safety tips for your city. Now in the evening, when, when I'm walking uh, neighborhoods, I find so many dark homes. Please, when you leave on your vacation, please make sure that a front facing side of the house is lit. Please don't keep it dark. And uh, while going to the airport, I would be very careful about taking ride shares or letting the maids know or contractors know about the fact that I'm gonna be gone on vacation. You know, Just keep it quiet and uh, you know, make sure you have your lights outside the home also turned on every evening. Make the house look like it's been lived. Uh, having a car on the driveway is also very helpful. And uh, so just simple things like that. And you know, one final tip is, please do not post any vacation pictures while you are out because they are scoping the world of social media and trying to find out who's on vacation. Let's go break into that home. And you don't want your home to be targeted. Okay, hopefully that answered your question. Okay, here is a question from Fred. Uh, Rishi, thank you for being a water hero. You have taken on the fight with San Jose Water. The surcharges unfortunately went through. Any plans to prevent future surcharges? Yes, uh, so we were protesting the surcharges now. Obviously we are still in drought. It's uh, quite cloudy today. And I'm looking out through this window and uh, I can see the rain will probably happen uh, within the next couple hours. And uh, everybody please stay safe out there and make sure you're looking at your clock gathers and things like that. But uh, yes, uh, we are not out of the dr drought yet. So I believe uh, the Valley Water District has uh, moved forward with the surcharge, has approved the surcharge. We cannot win them all. But uh, in the future, what we are going to ask for is these surcharges are plain evil is what I believe because there's a lot of gouging that goes on with surcharges. And what we are suggesting is to cap it off. Uh, so for this surcharge, they were looking at the 2019 water bill and they would like to see a 15% reduction over the 2019 uh, water bill. And what we would like to suggest to PUC is that it should be capped off to not more than two times the, the maximum water bill from the 2019 period. So future surcharges, we're gonna push PUC heavily to consider that and make sure that we are protecting the people because the water bills can go really, they can go three, four, five, six, seven times based upon surcharges. And that is very unfair, I think, you know. Okay, great question. Okay, let's talk about this one. We have a question from Peggy. Peggy saying that uh, Omnicron has me sitting at home and I'm worried about my health and my loved ones. And uh, Peggy, I hear you, but I would like to say this, that, uh, what we have observed with the Omicron, even with reports from South Africa and even the reports from Santa Clara County, that uh, if you're vaccinated, you probably have very mild symptoms. Uh, and this is, uh, yeah, so the symptoms are, are mild. And uh, so far we haven't seen too many deaths from this. Obviously, please look at CDC, what they are saying. Uh, don't rely upon me, look at, uh, read, read the news, read, uh, look at what the experts are saying. But uh, Omicron might be, uh, might be a little overrated at this point. We'll just have to wait and see how things play out over the next few weeks. It's good to be worried, but don't be that worried. Okay, okay here, is, uh, here is Peter from Saratoga. Uh, Rishi, I'm a Saratoga resident and absolutely unhappy with the state of our politics that have prevented you from becoming the mayor of Saratoga. You're the only one who has uh, been handling the tough challenges what do you want us to do? You deserve the mayorship. 
Should we launch a petition is what Peter is saying. And my, my answer, Peter, I really appreciate your kindness in, in, uh, in uh, joining us today and also expressing what you are feeling. Uh, at this point, you know, I don't think so anything is needed. It's politics, petty politics is what I call it. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we ended up winning with the greatest number of votes in city history. And sometimes we have gone against the grain a little bit. And, uh, and when you do that, you're ruffling feathers. And there's always payback for ruffling feathers. But, you know, what we do, what we believe in is sleeping like a baby. When I'm serving with integrity, when I'm doing the right thing, when we are serving the people with uh, their interest and not playing establishment politics or partisan politics, uh, I believe I'm doing justice to my role. Otherwise, why would somebody like me from the world of tech jump into the world of politics to play partisan politics? Not quite. I don't think so. So, uh, so nothing really needed. Uh, if you, any of you watching this might be puzzling over what happened. Uh, so mayor, mayorship is by rotation. Every council member in Saratoga takes uh, one year to become the mayor. It's a ceremonial role. And uh, this is my eighth year on the city council. And seemingly I've been uh, ignored. I've been uh, ignored for the mayorship. And in fact, uh, one of the council members who was in love with me kept saying that uh, we will never want Rishi to be the mayor of Saratoga. And that's totally fine. You know, it's just politics as usual. It doesn't slow us down. It doesn't bog us down. We are moving ahead because there are big challenges that need to be solved, not only here in Saratoga, but in Silicon Valley, which is the driving force behind me and my run for Congress. With your support, we'll get there, Peter. Peter, if I may ask, uh, join our campaign. We need your help here more than anything else. If you would like to join us, please email campaign at rishi2022.com, campaign at rishi2022.com, or fill up the volunteer form, rishikumar.com slash volunteer. I really appreciate this, Peter, and uh, thank you so much for, for the support. Okay, so this is from Gina. I read your recent email about the issues of California. I agree with most of your concerns, but what are you going to do? I didn't quite see that in your email. Well, Gina, it was sort of there in one of the links that we had sent out. It's hard for us to send out. I used to send out very long emails in the past, and I'm guilty of that. We are trying to keep them short and simple. So if you go to rishikumar.com slash report card, you will find, uh, you will find some, uh, some responses to that in terms of uh, what are the issues and what are the what is our response? What are we going to do to address them? And uh, again, that URL is uh, rishikumar.com slash report card. By the way, uh, Gina, uh, good question. So uh, look at your top challenge. Perhaps it's healthcare, perhaps it's homelessness, perhaps it's safety and burglaries. You know, if you, if you go to the homepage, rishikumar.com and enter keywords, let's say burglary or safety or water, you will find some policy papers pop out. We have written, I've personally written hundreds of policy papers that are sitting on the website and uh, we can't have them all on the main menu, hundreds of items to pick from. So all you have to do is enter the keyword in the search box and out will pop out all the links that have those keywords and you can pick and choose and read. But a great starting point for you, Gina, like I said, is uh, rishikumar.com slash report card. All right. So Rex is uh, asking tech savvy congressional leadership. Tell me what makes you better qualified than Anna Eshu who's been there for 30 years in Congress. Okay, excellent question, Rex. Uh, I sort of mentioned that in my intro. What we have done is applied the tech framework of finding solutions in government and everything we do, we try to approach it from that innovative framework of not only taking on the top challenges but also trying to deliver results, which is what we did in the city of Saratoga and uh, taking on the water challenge, uh, stopping high density housing, a 300 room hotel on top of a high fire risk zone and, uh, and battling San Jose Water Company. And for example, to battle San Jose Water Company, we rolled out a mobile app to make the protest to PUC a lot easier. And, uh, and you know, when you look at uh, what we have tried to do, even with like neighborhood watch programs, uh, we roll out one, we roll out two, we roll out three, and then we use the cookie, cookie cutter approach, you know, repeatable processes that will make it easier 
and try to remove the gating factors. So these are very simple approaches that we use in the world of tech and that have applied to, to government. And we believe uh, Silicon Valley needs uh, tech savvy congressional leaders because there's an opportunity for us to grow the economy. I understand the, the innovation economy from the inside working for companies like IBM, Cisco, and I currently work for a big data analytics AI ML. Uh, we are a software company that builds uh, solutions, data solutions for different verticals. And, uh, and this is uh, that understanding is sort of very critical when it comes to like data privacy issues, or even in terms of you know, the challenges we have today with the tech exodus where our quality of life issues are impacting us. And there are people, engineers, billionaires, companies leaving, heading out uh, to, to different parts of the world. For example, they are moving to Austin, they're moving to Miami, they're moving to Seattle and Silicon Valley is losing out. 45% of the revenue comes from Silicon Valley for California. And uh, we have to fix these types of challenges to ensure the long-term sustainability of Silicon Valley, because Detroit in the 80s, you remember that picture, you know, windows boarded up and a ghost town. We don't want to be like that. You know, we are thriving, we are doing well here, but we need to ensure that we make some prudent, proper choices to ensure the longevity of uh, Silicon Valley. So please do look up uh, Rex, uh, go to rishikumar.com slash about Rishi, look up LinkedIn. We believe we have the tech savvy skills that congressional leaders have lacked for a million years in Silicon Valley. And you will never have to sit down and do the binge cringe when I'm asking the questions in Washington, like we have done in the past. My videos will hopefully not turn into spoof videos because we will cut to the chase. And it, would, it will not be just like chest thumping, but when we ask the type of questions, we would like to see how we can actually impact the tech challenges that some of us are dealing with right now today. Great question, Rex. Okay, so, oh, here is a question on President Biden. His rating is down. Is this fake news? Well, you know, rating is really down. Uh, the, the COVID cases are uh, have actually, uh, I believe a lot more people have died this year compared to last year. And I don't know if it's a mishandling or I, I don't think so it's a mishandling. It's just the nature of the pandemic. If more people got vaccinated, perhaps that would not be the case. We see the smash and grab robberies that have gone up. Inflation is super high. We have supply chain issues. So, you know, it's, it's a perfect storm that has, that has uh, come together in the first year of President Biden. And uh, Afghanistan was a huge fiasco. I wish we would have done a better job of that. And uh, things have not been perfect. And that's the reason why the rating is down. But uh, there are a good three years. Now, I keep hearing that next year, in the, in the elections next year, the midterm, uh, the Congress, uh, Democrats will lose the House. And uh, it may very, very well be because there are so many who are retiring from, from especially Democrats. There are more Democrats who are retiring today. And, uh, you know, I think uh, if uh, the Democrats and Republicans stepped up to address the need of the hour, to really collaborate, to fix the problems, I think the infrastructure bill was great. We need to figure out a few other areas where we are serving the American people and fixing the challenges of America, creating a future that will be even better than, than what we have today. And every, it'll be all good. Okay, any other questions? Let's see. Oh, okay, good question. I see from an anonymous attendee, uh, Rishi, your slogan mentions uh, new energy. Does this imply anything about energy independence? <laughs> okay. I like that. So when we talk about uh, new energy, we talk about uh, new energy in the world of politics. Uh, we need some able leaders stepping up to address the challenges. But yes, we need to be energy independent also. And uh, we need to figure out, you know, how can we innovate with energy? And if you, if you search, uh, if you do the keyword search with energy, you will find some uh, policy papers out. We believe in uh, exploring different options and the nuclear energy, for example, I'll just give you a quick example. The nuclear energy has, has some uh, issues today with respect to you know, reactors that go haywire and that, uh, that tend to cause environmental damage, but also in terms of residue. If you can fix some of these issues and if you can package it into a foolproof fail say, uh, uh, a system that does not fail, then uh, that could very well be a future. 
And uh, wind, windmills, for example, are causing a lot of environmental damage. There are birds dying. And, uh, you know, the Bloom Energy, for example, is fossil fuel based, but it's a package like this, uh, uh, a, a box that sits on my hand can power an apartment. And we need to continue to explore options like these uh, that fill the regenerative braking system of Tesla is good. And uh, I, I believe that we are at uh, the fringe of a breakthrough. You know, we need to figure out and who can do that. It is America who, because the innovation is happening here in Silicon Valley and we have to focus on energy and figure out opportunities to create energy independence and, uh, and roll out better options for the rest of the world, which will also ensure that uh, we don't have these, uh, these uh, fuel guzzling cars that are being driven in India and China that are spewing at carbon monoxide. You know, it's not very healthy. And if we rolled out uh, electric cars or electric vehicles at the $2,000, $3,000 range, you know, this will uh, really, really help the world in, in a huge way. So we have to explore all sorts of different options. And uh, I'm gonna use that. It's a, it's a good play on energy. And uh, we will actually use that as part of our campaign line. Okay, uh, let's see if there are any other questions. Okay, that's all we have today. I really appreciate uh, all of you joining in. Thank you so much. RishiKumar.com is a website. I would love to hear from you. My personal email is Rishi at RishiKumar.com. Everybody have a very happy holidays to you. Merry, Merry Christmas and enjoy. Get some rest and relaxation and 2022 will be back. We are ready for the grind. We are pushing it. Election begins in early May and uh, June 7th is the primary election. And then we hope to make top two again with the jungle primary of California. And the election is set for November 8th, 2022. It's a big year for us. And our plan is to win it with your support. Thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you spending time and hearing me out. Uh, please do email me if you have any other questions at all. Thank you so much. Bye.